The world you see is not the world, it's just the world you see. That's a, a quote, a phrase that I've been really enjoying lately. It's basically pointing to the fact that we humans are not pure perceivers. That each act of perception is, in some sense, a creative act, an act of interpretation. Wherein we take the information that's coming to us from the outside world, and it goes through the filters, the lenses of everything that we've experienced in our past. All of those frameworks by which we make meaning, and then it becomes what we're aware of. So say, for example, that you're looking at an apple in the world. When you're looking at that apple, what you're seeing is a relationship between that sensory experience and all of the thoughts, all of the memories you have about apples, all of the meanings you have about apples. And that relationship creates the way that you experience that apple in that moment. So what's interesting to realize there is that that's a blend, really a blend between what's actually out there and all the interpretive functions that go on inside an individual's mental framework in perceiving that thing in the outside world. And that can exist to different levels. I think for, for some people, they become stuck within the past interpretations, and some people get very closed in their ways of thinking about the world. So if they only see the apple a little bit, and mostly they see all the mental framework they have around the apple. And I think that with sort of this mindset of curiosity, or a more open mindset, you can wonder a little bit more about it. When those thoughts come in, oh, this is, this is an apple, then you can say, well, is it really? What else is that in the outside world? Even the name apple is an overlay on top of that experience, that actual thing that's out there. Even the name apple is extra. It's not inherent in what is the object of perception. And that's interesting because, as I've discussed in previous videos, a lot of damage is done because we're stuck on a single interpretation of the world. We're not willing to observe something from different perspectives, or we're often not willing to concede that we don't hold a monopoly on interpretation of reality. When we come to realize that those interpretations are just just that, just interpretations, then it frees us up to not have to really defend them, but to understand another interpretation as a way of broadening our sense of reality, which is ultimately, I think, a positive thing when we can expand our perspective to include new ways of thinking about things. Otherwise, we'd just be stuck. So that piece, the world you see is not the world, it's just the world you see question the things that you take for granted about the world. I think this also goes further. This idea of the world we see is not the world, it's just the world we see could be taken in a huge other direction. And I like to think about that direction as well. The fact that none of us really sees that we're all kind of figuring it out together. We're like, what is this world? Well, I think it's kind of like this. And somebody else says, well, you know, in my experience, it's actually more like this. And then when we all talk together, if we don't come to that conversation with judgment, if we come to that conversation with understanding and curiosity, we get to challenge what we know to be true to the service of finding a larger, more inclusive sense of what the world really is. So with everything, I could probably just keep talking about this. I got a lot more to say, but it's about what you guys have to contribute. I have been so happy to hear all the different thoughts that you guys have shared about the previous videos that I've done and the previous topics that have come up within this group. It's really helped my mind like, move in some interesting new directions. So what I'd like you to do with this one is to take it into your brain, let it simmer, in there and to just see what 
wants to <laughs> come back out. And it might not even be related to anything that I said specifically, but maybe this idea sets off some other idea inside you and, and then maybe you will share that idea and I'll get to listen to it and I'll be super pumped listening to some cool other view of the world that may not match mine, but that will help me to find a larger sense. That'll help me to question maybe some of the things that I've thought and come into a more inclusive knowledge of everything that's out there. We really need each other. That's the thing about this. The world you see is not the world. The world I see is not the world. But together, maybe we can like get a kind of a cool idea about what it might be and then listen to somebody else and then go from there. That's really the cool thing about this whole project in general is that sense of sharing these opinions, these viewpoints, these passions, these philosophies with each other so that we can all come to a greater knowledge of ourselves, the world around us, and maybe even a greater sense of what we might be able to bring to the world to make it a better place for everybody who lives here. So I wish you all beauty and light, and I look forward to hearing what you have to say. The thought of, of perception and, and perspective and how important that is and how we view the world, I've always been really concerned with it. And it's informed a lot of me kind of um, growing up, I was very um, taken by it. it was something I was really interested in. But it, it was something that did make me happy. I wanted an undisputable truth. I knew that there is none. I always was baffled by the, the thought that I can only ever see the world through my own eyes and I can't see through anyone else's. It wasn't comforting to me at all to think that no matter how hard I try, I can never be fully understood. And I think that's a concern that is just inherent within everyone in society and in this, this day and age. It's all about identity and all about being seen and uniqueness and self-expression. Art is something that is becoming a really big thing in society these days because it allows people to attempt to be heard or to communicate an idea that they have or, or whatever and, and to be able to reach out to other people in the hope that, that they get it too. And I kind of wanted to talk about photography and this idea of perception and reality and how that is a fundamental part of photography. I think it also can relate to just the world in general. So say you look at a photograph of the war that's going on in Iraq, see? It could be something like a building being blown up and people being injured. You could look at a photograph from a magazine or a newspaper of, of that happening and we know from the media and everything else that that is something that is actually going on in the world right now, that is fact. And photography is the, the most realistic of all the mimetic arts and when I say mimetic I mean in that it mimics real life. Um, if you compare a photograph to a painting and they're both trying to depict the same thing there's something more realistic and more true to life about photography than there is painting, or at least it would appear to be that way. But because it looks so realistic, you could have the entire world around you telling you that that is real. That is a thing that happened. That you believe that it is and you forget that that's just one person's perspective. That was one person that looked through a lens and took that photograph. And you forget that photography, just like painting, is mark making. Um, if you think about the way that an image is developed onto paper, it's pretty much the same as painting is. It's just an image on a piece of paper and it doesn't become real until a person imbues some sort of meaning onto it. It doesn't become, it doesn't become this magical 
thing that everyone sees photography as until someone sets their eyes upon it. Because up until that point it's just a piece of paper with with some marks on it. And it can go further, you know, you can further manipulate photography. You can stage something and you can photograph things in a certain way to make it look as though something happened and something existed when it really didn't at all. Um, and if that's something that you're going for, then you would use you would use the photography as a tool. You, you know how convincing it is to people, and you use that to your advantage. But yeah, there's something that people people just take photography for granted that is it just is. Um, and that it doesn't have the same sort of expression to it that the other art forms do, say painting or drawing um, or even sculpture. But that's something I find really fascinating about photography um, and it's why I'm so drawn to it is that there is a, a core sort of paradox within it. It is born out of something that is very much true and that existed in the physical world. You know, I can, take a picture of this bed right now and I could turn it into something so abstract and so basic in terms of mark making but if it wasn't for this bed, this physical bed existing right now in this world I wouldn't be able to make that exact image. I could talk about it for a really long time um, and I could um, recommend books to read on you know theory of photography and I could recommend artists for people to look at if anyone's interested and also if, if anyone has anything that they would um, like to suggest to me for reading then I would, I would really really love to hear from you um, and the same goes for any art that I could look at because um, it's like I, I, it's, it's something that is really fundamental in the, the art that I make but yeah it can, can make me feel very lonely but it's also the thing that kind of drives me to, to make work and to put it out there. And the, the thing that I really liked that, that Dan said is that alone we may not be able to have a, a true or more complete understanding of the world that we're living in. But if, you know, like on the channel, if, if we have, say, my perspective, we have Dan's perspective, we have everyone else's perspectives, once we kind of mash them all together, we can get a more broad understanding of things and that. I thought that was nice. Yeah, I really like the idea of being able to do that. And he's right. Um, it's important to be influenced by others and to be open-minded, so I'll see you later. Bye-bye.